Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ian Rogers talking. Uh, welcome to our uh, scan based trading, um, a new way for to compete in the Omni Channel World uh, session. And I'd just like to remind everyone that uh, we do have all the, the mics open. So if you could uh, mute your, your device, that would be that would be appreciated. Uh, so today presenting is is myself uh, from Spice Technology. I'm the uh, practice leader for our consulting uh, division of the of the business. And joining me today we have uh, uh, Troy and Scott from Ralston Capital. Ralston, uh, uh, sorry, the beeping was. Distracted me. Ralston Creek Capital. Um, and so, just as a brief introduction to myself, um, I've been in the retail space now for well over 25 years, um, both in uh, um, consulting roles uh, for various uh, consulting organizations, but also in um, line leadership roles of, uh, in retailers. So, I understand both sides of the fence. Uh, and I'll also work with uh, with suppliers as well. So if I just hand it over for a second to uh, Troy and Scott, and you can introduce yourselves to the group. Hey, this is uh, – yeah, thanks, Ian, and we, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. This is Scott Story. I'm the president of Ralston Creek Capital. I'm here with Troy Probst. My background for the last 20 years has been in financial services in a number of different capacities. Um, and Troy has a has a uh, good compliment to my background because he's been a supplier uh, to retailers for for his whole career. So we kind of come at it from both angles, and we're excited to share our Austin Creek Capital stories and how we can support SBT programs with our financing capabilities. Great. All right. So uh, let's get let's get started. That's not. There you go. Uh, so today, you know, we, uh, you know, the big term everyone uses is is omni-channel, and and for us, our focus is on how to make omni-channel easy uh, for both suppliers and retailers. Uh, so if you look at this image, what we're talking about uh, in terms of uh, omni-channel, you know, retailers need to be able to connect with suppliers um, for uh, both um, e for e-commerce and wholesale. Uh, to be able to do scan-based trading, uh, EDI integration, uh, catalog and sales da data, and, uh, and then dropship. Uh, and then also we need to be able to connect into the, to our financial institutions. And so the trick for that is how do we how do we pull all that together uh, in a in a seamless way? And that's what uh, Spice concentrates on is a cloud-based technology solution to be able to do that, which I'll talk about in a minute. But first, a little bit more about, about who we are. Uh, we're the, uh, the fourth fastest growing IT firm in Canada. Uh, we're named uh, in, in 2017 uh, Profit 500 uh, in Canada, which is a real great honor. Uh, our, as I said earlier, we both we do consulting services. So advisory services around retailing, uh, in supply chain, in uh, e-commerce, uh, digital. Uh, so the whole the whole process uh, from end to end. Uh, we provide uh, project management execution services to help people with projects uh, to get them across the line, and also our managed cloud services that we provide uh, for our clients. But a couple examples of the clients are above. Uh, you know, a standard uh, retailers uh, that are well known throughout, throughout Canada. Uh, and in terms of uh, our our service, our technology services, the engine room for commerce and supply chain, as we call it, uh, we have a network that we've built that's cloud based. Uh, the first major component of that is Spice Connect, which is an EDI. And trading party integration platform, uh, in which includes supplier platforms, customer portals, uh, and uh, connectivity with uh, major uh, logistic uh, providers, uh, and every and web EDI as well. So a lot of uh, suppliers and retailers on the smaller side of the scale 
uh, don't have in, have integration into their ERPs, and so we provide them with a web portal so that they can do that. Uh, the next piece is is around content, uh, which is Spice Catalog, which is a way for suppliers uh, to be able to put up their product information, uh, including images, pricing, specs. Uh, currently, we carry over 500 different uh, attributes uh, in the catalogs, and um, this information can be made available from one supplier out to multi their multiple retailers, which enables uh, the retailer then to be able to, you know, to be able to connect by different ways, either through downloading or through integration, uh, to be able to bring all that product content uh, into their into their ERP. Uh, but typically, a lot of ERPs do not take the content that's required for e-commerce, and so we can build the integration so that it automatically updates uh, their websites as well. And then the next building block is Spice Digital, which is our e-commerce uh, solutions for both B2C, for B2B and uh, uh, B2C uh, portals. And in that can, what that includes is everything from building uh, the, the e-commerce platform for you um, to um, managing SEO, uh, providing marketing services uh, uh, to to you. Uh, so to give you an idea of the size of, of our network, uh, we work with about over 2,000 organizations, uh, and currently we uh, we host in the catalogs uh, somewhere north of 50 million uh, GTNs, or as many people still call them UPCs, and uh, we have transactions of about five billion dollars going through the network on an ongoing basis, and the transaction is basically a, a purchase order. So, um, scan-based, that's a little bit about us, but you know, today we want to talk about scan-based trading um, and how we can use it in the, in the modern world of, of omni-channel. Uh, you know, a lot of people are probably familiar with scan-based trading and thinking back to it in the old days when uh, it started first getting popular. It was all around uh, being leveraged in, in categories such as newspapers and in uh, Christmas cards and, and birthday cards and things like that. Um, but if you rethink about the challenges, it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a re regaining resurgence in the retail industry around supply chain um, because it allows for um, retailers uh, to be able to drive uh, uh, more product uh, uh, breadth and depth, uh, and it uh, moves that uh, financial burden over to the uh, to the the, um, the supplier. Um, and so we're see, starting to see um, people looking at how we can try to use it in different categories, and in fact. Some of the categories that we never thought would be able to use uh, scan-based trading, we're now seeing clients starting to use it in areas of fashion, general merchandising, um, and, and in fact, uh, we have a client who's who's moving forward in in uh, luxury apparel, which uh, which five or ten years ago people would say would never happen. Uh, so so I think there's a huge opportunity for leveraging scan-based. Uh, scan scan-based trading in uh, an omni-channel environment. And if you think about, you know, the uh, what you need to have scan-based trading work in a in a modern world where where we have multiple channels, we have speed to market, uh, and and how to use it in a creative way, uh, you need to be able to have uh, integration. So you can move that sales information, whether it's from an e-commerce site or whether it's from the stores. Um, and you need to be able to have their payments from your customers. So there's, you know, the foundations are all around the whole e-commerce, uh, the whole omni-channel piece is EDI integration. And on the other side, what you need to be able to provide your, uh, you know, with your suppliers is that online online catalog coming from your suppliers to you, so you can continually feed that that growing appetite that's happening for content, whether that content is for 
you know, online descriptions and pricing, but it's also growing into I need images. Um, and, and we're starting to see, you know, I need content for blogging and social media. So you need the integration points around there. Uh, you know, if you're doing scan based trading, you need to have replenishment plans integrated in with your suppliers and your retailer. Uh, you need to have inventory uh, availability so that uh, um, the supplier can work out its replenishment plan to the stores. And, and of course, uh, because you're getting paid when uh, the sale is being made, uh, you need to have integration to uh, banking. So there's there's a lot of uh, moving parts and a lot of integration. And you know, in the past, uh, it's been quite a challenge. And I think today it's become uh, way a lot more a lot easier for for retailers and suppliers to be able to build this integration that's uh, that's needed by 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 third parties such as us um, and in a cost effective way which now has opened up that door so how can I do an omni channel uh, customer centric approach and be able to provide my customers with with product uh, and experiment more, and that's part of what we're seeing as well. Is how do I, how do I experiment with new categories and new products? So if I'm a, if I'm a, a J Crew, how can I experiment with putting cosmetics uh, and having uh, cosmetics in my store when that's not my, my core category? As an example, uh, the, you know, I could do that through scan based trading because I don't have to make that commitment to the inventory. And I don't have to be an expert in that category because my suppliers, my partners are the expert in a, in a specific category. So there's, um, there's lots of new ways to start thinking about how to leverage scan based trading uh, in an omnichannel uh, world. So if you think about uh, what's the impacts to scan based trading, you know, we've talked about some of them and why. Um, Retailers are interested in it, and that's about, as I said, breadth and depth of adding new uh, new products uh, and, and and categories. But the other issues and why retailers are interested in scan based trading is shorter cash conversion cycles. You know, it allows them to free up working capital, which is a major impact, as we know. Uh, retailers are really feeling the squeeze uh, in the, you know recently. Um, a lot of them are struggling with how what's the new model. Uh, we've had a lot of examples like Sears, you know, most recently have just not been able to figure out the model and how to go forward. Uh, so retailers are really interested on how can I be more responsive to my customer? How can I do it in a more cost effective way? And scan based trading is one of those huge benefits for them to uh, significantly reduce their working capital. Uh, it also re works, re reduces uh, workload for them because it, in, it makes the processes simpler and we don't have to process invoices. So they can provide a, a large decrease in, uh, uh, in uh, resource requirements from, a, from an accounting perspective and just managing all that paperwork. Uh, it can improve on in-store merchandising and planogramming compliance because you've got your suppliers who are in there helping uh, in many cases you know, I know setting up how many, how much inventory I need and where I need it, and keeping it up to date. Uh, it's obviously there's a shrink reduction from a risk perspective uh, because I don't own the inventory. So from a retailer's perspective, um, they, that's very um, beneficial to them as well. And then in stock improvement. So you know, retailers to have a huge problem with uh, with shortages of in stock. Um, and because they've got their own teams who, uh, so you're going to just remind everyone you can put your machines on mute. Appreciate it. Uh, so in stock uh, improvement because the supplier is focused on their category. They are all they also know what's selling uh, throughout um, throughout Canada or the U.S. depending on where 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 you're trading um, from their other customers so they have a better understanding of that category and being able to figure out the in-stock positions. And as a result of that, you know, retailers get a sales lift uh, because of that focus and because, excuse me, the uh, increase in working capital 
um, they they get a mar they also get a margin gain. So you say, okay, so why is it a benefit to a vendor to want to move forward with uh, scan based trading? Then, if I'm gonna, not going to get paid when I ship it, I am only get paid when I sell it. Uh, I, there's just several several reasons for that. You know, I'm getting faster payment um, because when the sale happens at the POS, it automatically goes through as a sale, and my payment cycle tends to be faster uh, than when I go through traditional invoicing. Uh, I do have to an increase in my carrying costs, so it's the part of the downside to being uh, to, to it. But at the same time, uh, I'm able to control inventory better, so I'm able to reduce my my safety stock needs. Uh, I'm able to reduce potentially my returns because this retailer is not overbuying and then wanting to return it back. Um, and I'm able to get into new retailers where I'm not, it wasn't able to go before because it was a category where they weren't really interested, you know, it wasn't there really their category. They weren't sure whether they should be in that category, didn't want to make that financial commitment. Uh, so for example, like a J crew wanting, you know, getting into cosmetics or something, they're going, well, I'm not sure if that's really uh, our offering, but if you go in with scan based trading offering, the, uh, the retailer will go, well, there's no, no there's no downside. And as uh, as you know today, everyone's talking about endless aisle and how do I um, ha offer more and more product online, which is uh, which is an option from a scan based trading perspective. But also, you can take that same approach uh, in store as well. So I can come in and, and convince the retailer, give it a try with our new product, uh, new product or new category, uh, and there's no commitment on your side from a, from a having to pay up front. So I think there's a lot of advantages from a vendor to be able to go in with scan-based trading. The biggest challenge obviously around scan-based trading is the fact that uh, from, a, from a vendor perspective is that uh, you're carrying the cost of that inventory, uh, which we'll address in a few minutes. Why is it not moving? <clears throat> So what do you need to do to be successful in scam based trading? I've touched on some of it, but uh, here's, here's the, the better view of it. And that is around technology and data management. Um, so it's around EDI and reporting, um, and it's about master data, being able to move all that data uh, in a, an efficient manner uh, through, through EDI, through, um, a, a technology integration platform, uh, which is one of the things that uh, Spice provides. You've got uh, B2B uh, integration. Uh, B2B is uh, between the supplier and the retailer, so you're building up a closer trustness, a trust with, between your between your trading partner, and as a result, you know you're sharing more and more data. So together, you're now starting to think about. How do I compete on supply chains as opposed to um, how do I, I compete as an individual organization? And you need to change head office and store uh, processes if you're a retailer. So giving up that that little bit of that control about I don't I'm going to trust my my vendor to uh, to merchandise the store properly. Um, once, they, once you get over that little bit of uncomfort level, it's a great opportunity because it now frees up your resources to be able to focus on other categories and do other initiatives within your business. Uh, and then uh, you need to make sure if you're the vendor, um, how, do I, how do I manage the, the inventory financing side of it? Because there is uh, you know, obviously some impact to that. So specifically, um, you know, where does where does Spice play in this whole the whole process? It, we provide a turnkey um, platform that enables you to have scan based trading. So you know, we work out what is the overall program you need to have, um, and provide you with a playbook about how to implement it and and run it, uh, both from a uh, technology point of view. Uh, from a program management point of view, from a process point of view, we'll work with it on, with you on that. Uh, and um, onboarding. So if you are a supplier and you're bringing on retailers, we help you onboard your retailer. Or if you're a retailer wanting to bring on vendors, we bring, 
we help uh, with that uh, uh, rolling out that program as well. Uh, the integration and the EDI is all cloud-based for for scan-based trading, which makes it uh, cost-effective and quick for implementation. Uh, and there's that whole supplier retailer negotiations that we help with in terms of um, how to make the whole processes work. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over now to um, Troy and Scott, who are going to tell us about how uh, Ralston comes in and helps out on that, that critical piece of uh, uh, the financing. So I'm going to unmute, and un well, unfortunately, you're going to join me when I unmute. It unmutes everyone. So again, if you have uh, your your device on mute, that would be appreciated. Okay. Thank you, Ian. This is Troy Probst. I um, appreciate everybody attending this um, webinar, and thanks for the um, definition and history and explanations that you gave, Ian. You know, Roston Creek Capital um, kind of started because, as Scott alleged uh, and, and talked about a little bit about my my history is is that I was a supplier for the last 25 years. My my family grew a uh, consumable products company to be one of the largest in the world of our category, and we sold 68 out of the top 100 retailers in the world. And one of the things that I personally saw and experienced over that time was that retailers more and more were coming to us saying guys, we really want you to do an SBT program with us. And one of the challenges, even as big as our company was, is that it was always, even if we wanted to do the consignment or the SBT programs, the challenge was is that our banks and our working capital lines and things, it was against the covenants. Well, not only do I believe in the consignment and the SBT process and, and all the benefits that Ian has uh, talked about in his in the previous conversation, but I think it's also the way of the future, and we believe as a finance company that um, these assets are exactly what we want to lend on, and um, so Ralston Creek Capital specifically loans as an asset-based lending company um, to the supplier for the consigned inventory. And to our knowledge, we're the only company that does that. So, um, you know, we feel like we really fill a void that's out there. We really feel like we can grow the supplier's business. We really feel like that we can um, really meet the needs of both the supplier and the retailer. And collectively, you'll be able to, to, to grow your business. You know, the challenge always was when my sales guys would come back to me, they'd say, hey, we can really, we can go get this program. And whether you're the largest in the category and you're trying to protect your market share, or you're the second, third, or the new guy trying to go out there and, and grab market share, I think this allows you a unique avenue to do it, and RCC fills the void to be able to get that done. Um, if you switch to the next slide, Ian, um, you know, one of the things that was going on in my world is, is you know, 25 years ago, I was net 30 and we were negotiating whether it was the 2% or the 1% and you know and typically now um you know recently we negotiated a term for 120 days with two major retailers you know the reality is is that if your product is is strong you're actually going to get paid faster by doing your product your program through an SBT program than you would be under traditional retail terms these days and and so we feel that this is the way of the future. We think that um, early adopters by the supply chain is going to grow their business, create greater market share. I even believe early adopters are going to be able to make more margin, and we're going to be able to increase your cash flow. So that's where RCC fits in. It's, um, you know, we're excited about this space, obviously, um, and uh, looking to... Um, you know, introduce RCC to the right supply chain. Yeah, if you want to go to the next, the next slide. So just, just to put a, a finer point on exactly you know, the void we fill, I'm going to compare a traditional asset baseline to, to SBT. And our differentiator, 
as Troy talked about, is we count the consigned inventory as an asset for the loan. And most banks exclude that, that asset. And in our humble opinion, they're overstating the risk, and we believe there should be a, a financing market for this consigned inventory. So at the top, you have an asset base line. If you have inventory in your warehouse, you can get financing on that. You can get working capital. When you sell it to a, a retailer, you get accounts receivable, and certainly get work, you can get financing against that as well. On the bottom of the page, that same inventory, when you put it, uh, that inventory on someone else's retail shelves, that's when the banks and even the non-banks, uh, we haven't found anyone else out there that will continue to, to lend against that asset. And so that's really where we come in um, and, and provide that much-needed capital to, to, have, to have these SPT programs uh, and to be able to grow and expand. Uh, and we will also support the buyback of inventory when you start an SBT program. And, and so really, for a lot of companies uh, that, that don't have access to the broader debt capital markets who aren't super, you know, super, super mega billion dollar companies, they're really stuck. There's, a, there's only a couple of terms. One is to let your competitor come in and do the SBT program. So there's certainly a do-nothing strategy. Or you have to put your own equity dollars into uh, finance and inventory, and as anyone who owns a business or runs a business knows, that's very expensive capital, and, and equity should be utilized for things like more strategic reasons, like doing uh, an acquisition or, or investing in new uh, facilities or whatnot. So it's a mismatch of return and, and sort of financing. So we come in and do what we haven't seen any other bank do and just sort of include consign inventory as part of the ABL line. And on the next slide, Ian, I'll, I'll walk through the process, it's, and it's extremely simple. Uh, you know, a supplier ships goods on the left-hand side, left side of the page. The supplier ships, in this case, a million units at a dollar to a retailer. The retailer alerts Ralston Creek Capital that that inventory has been received. Then we then secure a lien against that inventory, and once that's done, we advance the capital to the supplier. And then on the other side, when the when the retailer sells um, sells the product to a consumer, then the retailer sends that money to a joint bank account, and we pay down the line and then remit the balance to the supplier. So it's just it works just like any other uh, line of capital would. There's nothing there's nothing uh, difficult about it. What we'll do we'll walk through two quick case studies. So Ian, if you want to go to the next page, um, just to give you a sense for some of the deals that we've worked on. There was a, a national discount chain that designated fragrance, the fragrance category, uh, as SBT, and a supplier wanted to acquire this new retail customer but didn't have the capital to do so. And they were they were in need of about $3 million uh, of, of, of cash to, to stock the shelves in several hundred doors in the warehouses for this retail chain. And so what we did, the process that we went through was, was fairly straightforward. We signed a non-disclosure agreement with the supplier. We requ requested basic financial information, and uh, product and program information. And then we ensured that this product could get recall insurance. And this is something we provide for all our products. And this is really to protect uh, the supplier and Ross and Creek Capital to make sure if there's a recall, then, then we're all covered. So we got recall insurance and then I wrote that. And then based on the shrink of the product, the product margin, the markdown allowance, we allocated advance rate uh, to, to, to that good. And then, you know, we put the credit agreements in place and perfected the, the lien against the product on the shelf, and we advanced the capital. Uh, and this has gone extremely, extremely well for the supplier. The supplier and the retailer are, are, uh, have been pleased with, with the results, and, and uh, the program continues to grow. And then the second case study on the next page, Ian, involved the beach towel uh, product at a mass merchant chain. Yeah, and I think the only, I think the only difference really between uh, basically this case study and the one Scott was speaking about is that primarily this program already existed at the retailer, and uh, a new supplier wanted to come in and take advantage of using SBT to get in it when the national retail, retailer transition from a traditional-based retail program to a scam-based trade program. Um, so the new supplier came in, wanted to do that, and we were instrumental in helping provide the funding to not only uh, take the existing inventory that was on a traditional retail program, 
we funded what was already on the shelves plus the go forward uh, process uh, 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 for the SBT program. Uh, it's going extremely well. The retailer and the supplier are both very happy because sales are looking like they're going to potentially double this year. Um, and you know, I think that's a function of focus, right? Because now you've got the supplier really getting real-time data with the ability to be able to, to um, uh, watch their inventory at that instead of waiting on 90 days of accounts receivables to come in to say that there was a problem. Um, and the other, and what I think as a, as a fellow supplier, I think one of the, the unique things about this is that now because it is working so well that the supplier is asked to take on other categories within that program. Um, and so they're going to be able to grow their business and grow their company. So that's really the, the difference. Um, so those are the examples for Ralston Creek Capital. And um, I, I think, Ian, we're supposed to uh, open it up for maybe some questions at this point. Yes. Uh, so if anyone has any questions or you'd like to ask uh, any of us, uh, please feel free to, uh, to speak in at this time. No? Okay. Well, uh, we would like to thank everyone for their participation today. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to myself or, or Troy or Scott. I uh, would be happy to uh, talk to you in more detail about uh, how you could leverage scan based trading um, for your category uh, and, uh, and and how it works in the overall omnichannel strategy for your for your business. Uh, so I appreciate uh, everyone's time today. And uh, if there's no more, if there's no questions, uh, then I would uh, say good afternoon and have a pleasant uh, a pleasant day. All right. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.